So we're now going to look at G protein couple receptors. So we're going to start from macro and work our way to a micro. So to start, the N-terminus of G protein couple receptor is on the, in the extracellular, while the C is the C terminus is found in the intracellular. And this specific GPCR that I've drawn, the alpha subunit is bound to GTP, which means that we're in the active state. And this also means that the beta gamma subunits have dissociated or have moved down the lipid bilayer. So we have different types of interactions that can occur to initiate this activation. So we can have biogenic amines. And your biogenic amines are basically noradrenaline, dopamine, histamines, and acetylcholines. They can bind to the receptor and activate. You can have different amino acids and ions, and they will bind and also activate the receptor. And this is some examples of this are glutamate or calcium and GABA. Lipids are another route, and these are your uh, prostaglandins. And then we can have peptides. And peptides, some examples of them are angiotensin, thrombin, um, FSH, LH, TSH, and endorphins. And then we can have other sources or other signals that could interact with the N-terminus and allow for activation. And some, some examples of in the other group is light, odorants, pheromones, nucleotide, uh, can cannabinoids, and endorphins. So there are a lot of different things that can bind to the N-terminus to activate the GPCR. And so there are different routes that we can take once active. You can have, from the GPCR itself, G-independent effector molecules. And then we can have four different pathways that are going to emerge from the alpha subunit. So the first is the alpha I, which alpha I is the initiator. And this is bound to GTP. And what this is going to do is this is going to inhibit C amp production. And you're also going to find adenyl cyclase, which is going to be involved in this. And the main function of alpha I is going to be cell motility. The next route we can take is alpha Q. And this is going to be involved with phospholipase C beta, DAG, calcium, PKC, and the result is cell proliferation. Next we have alpha S bound to GTP and this is going to be involved with adenyl cyclase. It's going to increase uh, CM concentration and what we saw in this section right here was actually a decrease of CAMP concentration. And <coughs> this is going to be involved with cell metabolism, secretion, growth, and motility. This phase is also going to go into the nucleus and it's going to impact transcription factors and allow for gene expression and regulation. And then we also have in this 
category the last alpha subunit, which is alpha 12, 13, one bound to GTP. And this is your row GIF pathway, and we're going to get into what GIF does. It's also your row A, um, your cadherin, and beta cadherin. And what this is involved in is tumor progression inversion and metastasis. So this group right here, if you think about it, is really involved with cancer. And this is also going to go into the nucleus and affect gene expression and regulation. And then lastly, we have the beta gamma. And beta gamma is going to be impacted by ion channels, specifically potassium, PI3K gamma, PLC beta, and adenyl cyclase. And what these are involved in is desensitization. and apoptosis. And these groups are actually going to go into the nucleus as well and they're also going to impact gene expression and regulation. Ultimately the response of these three pathways is going to lead to some biological response which means that it's going to lead to pro proliferation, differentiation, development, cell survival, angiogenesis, hypertrophy, or cancer. So there are different routes that we can take leading to this. And so that's sort of why GPCR is really important because it has a lot of different output functions and different results that can come up.